It's a common sight this time of year. Hundreds, if not thousands of crows will flock and roost together in treetops, in towns and even in cities like here in Plattsburgh. So why do crows come together at night? Our producer Michael Hansen sits down with John Thaxton, longtime director of Northern New York Audubon and a columnist for Adirondack Explorer. The thing about crows that's always struck me is that, uh, how smart they are. And uh, they're very adaptable. And they're very common. Crows are probably more adaptable than people are. Well, they're very communal, and they oftentimes roost in colonies. They also are dependent on certain food supplies. And when the food supplies disappear, which they can very rapidly, especially up here. It gets cold, a lot of their food supplies die, including insects. They'll in unison get up and flock and go someplace where they can find some food. They're very communal, they keep in touch, and they let each other know where to find food. I mean, these are, these are smart birds, the crows, very smart birds. Very few birds have the intelligence and the, uh, the society to communicate like that. They'll signal with eye movements and with beaks that we should go over here because there's nothing to eat over there. And, uh, being very intelligent and being very communal, I th you know, you can't really hypothesize about this, but I think they feel safer in groups. I mean, they're always in groups. I mean, you don't, there's no such thing as one crow. Do you think crows get lonely? I'm sure they do, you know. I've no, none of them has ever told me that they were lonely, but I'm sure they could get lonely. It's a very smart bird. It's a very smart animal. And they, they seem to like remember the things that they learn, which is another unusual sort of bird thing. A lot of birds don't remember things that they learn. They learn something and learn how to do it. They do it, they don't do it anymore, they forget about it. Crows recall these things. My theory is that they like people because people represent opportunities, especially for food, which is what they're primarily interested in. Most of the large groups you see this time of year are birds that are coming from farther north, and they all sort of gather in places where there's potential food resources. The food resources get very slim and few and far between. I think crows have empathy. I do. I mean, I mean, I'm a bird watcher. I probably think all the birds have empathy, but uh, they have, you know, an, an uncanny amount of empathy for an animal. Up there with dogs, maybe, which is saying a lot because dogs are a lot smarter than crows. But crows are just—they're uh, friendly. They remember you, and I think they're beautiful. I don't think people should take them for granted as um, there's always going to be crows, they're not endangered. I mean, they're not endangered, but uh, there should be some conservation measures to make sure that we have a good population of crows and uh, they don't start declining. If there weren't crows, I think there would be pestilence. I think there would be a lot of uh, pests insects and stuff like that that would flourish if there were no crows to get them. Crows keep these things in check. <laughs>